Welcome to Build and Self Beliefs Career Podcasts. The purpose of these podcasts is to give young people a true insight into all kinds of careers and professions. In the interviews, we hear about the highs and lows of working life and how people have overcome any difficulties to make the very best of every situation. Young people will also get some brilliant advice to support their future career success. Right, we're going to do our career podcast today and you're going to talk about <clears throat> well, your youth work and experience with youth work and your training to be a teacher, which is brilliant. So we're going to have a quick chat about that. So um, tell us what you're currently doing or explain what you're currently doing. So I am currently on a primary PGCE course at Sunderland University um, and I am still a youth worker as well and also a trustee on the board of Building South Belief. Ah, yes, I know, you are a young trustee. So why did you choose teaching in the end then? I chose teaching because I had this epiphany one day where I realised that what the career path that I was going down wasn't what I wanted to do. So I was still quite young, I was 19, and I was in university, um, and I didn't last very long at the, the university I was at first, York St John's, and I realised one day that I didn't want to be here, I didn't want to be on the course that I was on, which was philosophy, and I wanted to come home and, and start working with children. So <clears throat> what do you think then, do you think that was the right decision now in hindsight? Do you think, or did you not do enough research? Why did you end up, you know, um, or did you just think that once you got there, just wasn't for you and you hadn't realised till you actually had that experience? Yeah, once, once I got there, I realised it wasn't for me and I, I stopped becoming part of the university life and stopped engaging and then I realised, oh, I should, this is not what I want to do. So um, after two months, I came home and started looking for um, teaching assistant work or so teaching did you assistant. Then, then? So you did teaching assistant? Yeah, I um, started an apprenticeship to become a, well, a teaching assistant and then after my apprenticeship in that secondary school, I got kept on as a full-time TA. All right, really good. So again, so apprenticeship's an interesting route. How did, why did you end up taking that route? Do you think it was, to, was it to get the training as you were working? Yeah, it was to get, yes, it was to earn as I was learning. So to, to get the training and to be able to earn a wage at the same, at the same time. Yeah. And did you, you were also a youth worker, aren't you? Or you trained youth workers. So did you do I am. at the same time? I only did my youth work about two years ago. I, I, um, I saw a job advert for a local youth club in the Tanfield area and I decided to apply for it. Um, and with the experience I had in the school, uh, I thought that I would have a chance in it and it turns out I've got it. And I've been working sort of on and off for, for the den for a few years now, for three years, I think. So what, um, what in particular appeals about youth work and what would you advise about, about getting involved in that kind of um, sector? I like youth work because it's different to be in, in a school. It's like that non, it's like that non-formal way of educating children. And it, it's, it's nice to see children outside of, of school because they are different people when they're in a, like a, an, an informal setting. And it's, it's, it's brilliant to get into. You, you get such a good relationship with the children and people that you're working with. And uh, it's, it gives them so many more opportunities that they might not have had in school or in their community. And what kind of activities do you do then? What, do you take them out? You take them out, don't you? And you do yeah, we do. Yeah, we do trips. Um, we do. We bring people into the youth club to deliver sessions on various different things. Um, we do different activities, we do games. Sometimes we just come in and sit down and put a bit of music on and chill out because that's what the young people want to do so we do a variety of, of different things in youth club that's really brilliant and i think for certain mm. kids that's i mean it's just a really good outlet isn't it where they they can be themselves a little bit more and it's less formal and it, it, there's no pressure on academic things is there yeah there's, there's no pressure no and you can do things that they might have done in school you might be able to talk about and do a few activities at the things that they are learning about in school but it doesn't feel like they're being taught it's like from a different perspective so it is that informal learning and that and that voluntary engagement so they choose if they want to come to you or not which i think it is good they get that choice yeah um I which I think it's yeah important. so and also i know you've also worked at mcdonald's 
Yes, I am currently work at McDonald's. I'm a, I'm a crew member there. I've worked there for three and a half years. So basically, what have you, I mean, in essence, you've had to do lots and lots of different things because because of what it's was McDonald's, I'm assuming, is more for money than anything. Yeah, more for money. Um, so throughout my last three years at Sunderland of doing um, a childhood studies degree and now on my primary PGC, I've held down two two jobs, pretty much two jobs for, for money and for ex one is money and one is experience. Um, what have you learned? Do you think it's important to do those kind of extra jobs? What have you learned from it? Yeah, there's no yeah, there's there's no pressure really for anybody who's studying to to do that because you could just get your your student finance vouchers not to get the, the maintenance loans and to work for it. But I have learned that it it's good because that was um one of my first other jobs alongside TA work. I was making my own money, um, gaining that independence and 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 helps you prioritize things like now I have a car, so I had to prioritize car bills and things like that. And it's good to have to. It's good to have a job on the side. So it, it's meant you could fund your car, be more independent and have yeah. money. Yes, make money, yes, and, and do something that I love now, which is working with was work, working with the young people because at the time I wasn't in any sort of school setting. So um, youth work helped, was, do that. helped me work with the young people in an informal way. And then leading on to the teaching, what about the teaching experience? Because I, I, I do know you were in the, you were in two minds a little bit, weren't you? So what? when did you decide yeah. you thought, actually, this is what I want to do? So after I finished my dissertation and, and completed my childhood studies degree, um, I had this this time in the summer where I thought, oh, I, I've always dreamed of becoming a teacher since I was a little girl. And I thought, now I don't want to do this anymore. Um, I think it was mainly around the pandemic and just around the, will I get a job and, and will I successfully get out of the course and be able to train? There was just so many worries. It was mainly around the pandemic and the uncertainty of the future. But I then decided that a couple of weeks later, I thought, no, I'm going to apply. No, it's late. So I did, got an interview straight away, got onto the course and I thought, I, I, I don't regret it one bit. I think it, it's brilliant that they have. And do you think you you are, if you'd done it when you were a little bit younger, do you think you would have been as well prepared for the course? Oh, definitely not. If I'd, if I'd got on to it, I did when I was younger apply for like a primary education course at Sunderland. I thought if I'd got onto that course and done those three years, I wouldn't have been half as prepared for teaching as I am now looking at the experience I've had with childhood studies, my teaching assistant work, my youth work, um, it's definitely prepared me more applying to do teaching, teacher training now. And what do you like the most then about the teaching experience? What have you enjoyed the most? Um, and I love seeing the progression that the children are making. Um, I, when I, I didn't start a placement until the end of November, but I looked at their books from sort of reception in September and looking at the progress that they've made now in February, it's, it's amazing. I've, I've loved seeing the progression, even though we're in a pandemic, they're still coming to school, most of them, and doing really, doing really well. And what about that emotional connection? Do you think it's been important to for them as well to get to know someone like you and in a, in, in that environment for them? Or what do you think they've got out of? Yeah, definitely. I think when you start working with children and young people, you must, that relationship has got to be there for them to engage and that respect has to be there both ways. So I think now I, I, when I started the school, I just did the first three weeks was just getting a feel for the school, acting as like a shadow for the teacher or like a teaching assistant. And that's how I built up the relationship with the children in those three short weeks. I managed to get a, a really good bond and it is really yeah, important. It doesn't take long, does it? I mean, people no. think, you know, I mean, obviously I've been teaching for years and I always say that, if you, if you can give the impression that you, you genuinely care, and I know you do genuinely care, that's a re that is the best starting point for any relationship with any kid. Yeah. That if they think you're bothered, <clears throat> they'll then that's it. They'll do anything. Yeah, you. yeah. You've got to be approachable, haven't you? And nurture because I work with such young children. You've got to be very nurturing. You like that. You like their carer, aren't you? During the day, or their parent when they come to school, they rely on you. They depend on you. So I think that relationship's really important. And yeah, so once they start seeing me there every day, they realise, oh, she's not going anywhere. She, she's here to stay for a little while. So that that was really rewarding. And working for the charity as well. I mean, I know you've been a great help to me. 
and we've done quite a few projects haven't we so what do you think you've got yeah. out of working in that, <clears throat> all that insight into the charity sector so if it wasn't for the, the the charity i wouldn't have had as much insight into the the pre like the, the prevalence and the importance of, of of supporting young people and children with their mental health and with their self-esteem and uh, impact it's impacted on me so much that i i came to you for help with my dissertation and i did my dissertation based on on the charity and in, in children and young people's mental health and and identifying those risk factors early in order to support them in later life and I think that's been huge for me and it's it's really stuck with me and I just I love what the charity does and I'm I support what the charity stands for I think as well it's do brilliant. you think for you working in early years that it's even more important that you know someone as a professional like you can identify that with them at a really early age you know that any issues or eyeing them out or encourage yeah. them when they're so much younger can have such a big impact yeah it, it, yes working in early years and it, it because of the experience i've had with the charity i'm able to see that mental health issues and children do start as early as like four or five year old and you can see it you can see it when you're on placement in schools and yes it is really important to to be to be i think where well, i prefer to work with the younger children mm -hmm. Well, um, just encouraging them isn't it and building up their yeah. confidence at that age yeah and it's just little small things yeah Even like getting them put their hand up in class or getting them to ask answer yeah. a question mm. or i mean i get you get older kids who are like you know or you even at university and that they'll still say oh, i don't like talking or i don't like reading out yeah or, i don't and you think you know if you can get them over that at four or five years old and get them more yeah. involved that this that stays with them all the way through so i think you know for you having that insight now and that appreciation of it, do you think that'll help? I think it will help, yeah. I think it, the the more independent you start to make children at an early age, the the more independent they will be in later life. Yeah, so getting them in, we, we like the children to take on little roles in school, like helping the, the teacher with certain jobs or can you go and bring this over for me? And they like that, they like that ownership, they like, they like that role that they're helping an adult. And I think in, in later life, if, if that keeps on going through at school where they can help an adult with things, I think they'll become more we independent. Were when, when we were kids, <clears throat> we used to have the highlight of the day or the week or the year was wheeling the telly in on the trolley. So you had these horrible old massive old tellies and you didn't even, it wasn't even recorded. You had to watch it live. This is when we were in primary school. And Peter was just saying the highlight of his day was if he could go and get the telly because he got like a few minutes out of class to go and find the trolley and wheel it in. <laughs> yeah. What's at school? Yeah, I, I like that. If I got a job to go and get something, I used to relish being out of the classroom for just a couple of minutes and mm -hmm. and seeing look, peeking through the other classroom doors and seeing what the other children were doing. I used to like that. We used to always have like monitors and, you know, people that give the books out and that's gone a little bit in schools. Actually, it's a bit of a shame yeah. because that's, it used to be like really kind of set thing that you would rotate, giving them jobs and making sure they did things and yeah. had a bit of an input. Um, so maybe that's something we should bring back. Yeah. The, so, you take... Thank you very much. And what I'm going to ask you now is what advice have you got for young people? What do you think about youth work, about teaching, about teaching assistant, apprenticeship? You've done the lock case. <laughs> if, uh, my advice would be if you want to do it, do it. If your gut is telling you that what you're currently doing, you know, what your heart's telling you, what you're currently doing is not what you should be. Take that risk. I think coming back from university broke a lot of my family's heart that was a really it was a very rational decision I made it was quite quick but it was the I'll never look back it was the best thing I've ever done so if you want to do something do well, it it's not back didn't you it's not like yeah you, you off you just had a no rethink, and then yeah. you went back and did something you really wanted to do yeah I had a yes I had a rethink and those three and a half years were spent working in a, a fantastic secondary school as a teaching assistant but at that point that made me realize it was actually primary school children I wanted to work with and not um, secondary school but yes I would say go for it and you're never too old I thought at now at the age of 25 that I'm still a bit old to be training than I should have been a teacher by now but I, I'm not I'm still young and still learning and that's okay yeah I, I mean I do I totally agree with you and I think well I know I, I encourage you doing because I do think you're like a born teacher and I think some people are and I think it would have been a real travesty for you not to do it to not to yes but in, in that time last year when I was having those second thoughts, I did think 
I've always said that I was, I've always thought that I was going to be a teacher and that it was like something that was innate. And if I didn't follow that and pursue my dreams, then I would regret it forever. You don't have to do it forever. You no. Do it when it suits you, and then there's all kinds of career opportunities, all kinds yeah. of skills that you get, and and then you can make decisions later. Like but you're in a much stronger position having that qualification and having that experience than you would. Yes. Be. Yeah, and I'm not saying you have to cram all those things in one. Like I did, like teaching assistant, youth work. But the more things that I came to do, that the more natural I found it to just work with children. It started to come more naturally to me, and um. The, and then plus on on the job you get lots of training so now I have first aid training I've got safeguarding training and, and, and just look know. yeah I just think for you it's getting that confidence up as well wasn't it yeah you, you that, had to regain your confidence after. I had to regain it yes um and yes and I was very nervous when I first started placement but then when I got asked to start taking lessons and when I've been I've, since then I've been observed as well a couple of times that that confidence just it went down but then it shot back up after I heard that I had a brilliant lesson and I got some really good feedback so that my confidence has come has come back because I'm working with children who are very young and um, they like having me there in the classroom and they listen and, and they do the work so it's, it's very rewarding. That's fine that's brilliant well thank you very much for today I really appreciate it. Anytime you you're welcome. Thank you for joining us today if you're interested in learning more about other careers, please go to our website at buildingselfbelief.org where you can find many more examples of great career paths to potentially take. If you need any advice about anything we've discussed in the podcast, please get in touch. Our purpose is to support young people whenever we can.